So is it racist to call a black person eloquent? Cambridge professor Priyam Vadagopal says that this is a way of dismissing the views of um, black people. Tom, you've written about this, this, this mm. quite funny um, conflagration. Do you want to describe it? Yeah, so um, Dr. Gopal, um, as she likes to be referred to, as if, <laughs> which is, there's a story in that, um, who's this sort of professor of post-colonial studies at Cambridge, has become like a bit of a kind of phenomenon mm. online as someone who is often kind of indistinguishable from a parody account, I think it's fair to say. And this is her kind of latest comment, which is that, as you say, it's um, sort of a microaggression, I yeah. guess, in the lingo to um, refer to a black person as eloquent. It was in response to a piece in The Telegraph by one of her colleagues at Cambridge called David Abalafia, who's a historian, and it was about the Colston Four um, and the uh, acquittal that we talked about in the podcast last week. Um, and at one point he referred to David Olashoga, who's uh, also a historian who gave this kind of expert testimony at the trial, and he said he was eloquent. So first of all, Dr. Gopal just wanted to <laughs> criticise the article itself, but then again, just found a way to basically imply it was racist. It, again, as you're saying, it was a kind of way of saying, you know, what you're saying is very impassioned and all the rest of it, but it's still, you know, now, not now, serious. There, there. Exactly, that kind of thing. <laughs> And it's just part of this weird subgenre, I think, of um, <laughs> of sort of woke anti-racism, which is trying to suggest that even uh, complimenting ethnic minorities as a form of racism is yeah. a really sort of wacky end of it. Um, but at the same time, I think it's you know in the in the full of Dr. Gopal, we see that you know often when you talk about these ideas, these kind of quite balmy identitarian concepts, people kind of say, well, who actually believes that? Professors at Cambridge University, mm. it turns out. So a silly little story, but revealing in some respects, I guess. Ella. That's the, I mean, that's the funny and depressing thing is that I was trying to go back through Dr. Gopal's tweets to find the original one that was talking about her use, you know, the use of the word eloquent. And it was taking me a very long time. And it's a story that's only just <laughs> happened. It was reams and reams and reams of tweets from her about so-and-so said this about me in the tabloid press and blah, blah, blah. This person did this. <laughs> And you do think, how is it okay that this Cambridge Don is spending this much time on Twitter <laughs> talking about herself? And the it, it's the reason why it is important is because Dr. Gopal has been here before in relation to controversies around microaggressions or claims of racism. I mean, as you joked about initially, Tom, mm. infamously, she claimed that porters at Cambridge were racist because they were calling her madam yeah. rather than Dr. Gopal. And that this was an expression of, you know, the, the fact that the help couldn't even address you properly <laughs> that was an expression of white supremacy and, yeah. and racism. Um you know the the she then went on to just about you know I know this sounds slightly boring but I think it is important. She then went on to later in these all these tweets I was reading say, well I didn't call him racist. So I wasn't saying that the use of the word eloquent was racist actually. But why would you need to call someone racist when they defend a slave trading statue? Mm. So really, what she was saying was it wasn't actually the fact that this professor had called David Olashoga eloquent, and everyone knows that David Olashoga is eloquent. He has loads of television programs. <laughs> he you know that's part of his success as a historian who's become popular. Um, but it wasn't that. It was the fact that this professor was criticising Ola Shoga and indeed the Colson Force political position in in wanting to pull down this statue. And it's that kind of slippery nature of, the, of identity politics where everything gets labelled as this sort of slight, as this insult to your yeah. very, you know, the thing that is... Um, you know, part of your, an unmovable part of your identity, your skin colour, your sex, you know, the way you look, whatever it is, your disability. And actually what they're doing is attacking your politics. And it's cowardly because what she should do is come out and say, I disagree with what you are saying about this statue. And I think you're wrong on this. And that's what you would expect Cambridge professors mm. to do. But no, it has to be on the level of the kind of personal, which is inc both degrading for the professor who's been now labelled as a kind of racist, but also degrading for herself and indeed Ola Shoga, because it's suggests that they themselves have no grounds for their position. Yeah. It sounds like a caricature, but it is just, I disagree with you, therefore you're a racist at this mm. point. It's just ridiculous. I mean, especially ridiculous in this case, because as many people, you know, in possession of access to Google found out very quickly, is that Dr. Gopal herself had referred to Benjamin Zephaniah <laughs> as eloquent in an article <laughs> three years ago. It's just utterly ridiculous, but it is just one of those things, I think, which just sort of demonstrate how much this, uh, what can feel like quite a ridiculous ideology has just permeated even our highest institutions of learning. It's just sort of like second sense to a lot of people now. And that's one of the things that's so depressing about it, especially because what they're pushing is just such a, is, as you say, it's very kind of petty and it's just using 
these things are just sort of cudgels most mm. of the time, you know, um, just to take down people you disagree with. But again, it just shows how much that very divisive, that very sort of racialized sort of outlook really genuinely permeates the intellectual elite at this point. You know, there's a bit of a battle going on about it at Cambridge and elsewhere, but it's still very much in place, definitely. And it's not just a few crazy students now.